Hello there and welcome back to my channel, Mike's Music Corner, where I like to say, keep things real. So if you've been watching this watching... series of videos I've been doing, which are centered around the notion of myself doing modifications and upgrades on this guitar, which I'll talk about in a moment, and being someone who has no experience or knowledge how to do so, and my journey along the way as I make my mistakes and I learn from them. Well, a funny thing happened. I guess funny maybe isn't the right exact word. So those of you that have seen some of my previous videos may recall that one of my, in fact, my very first mod I did myself was on the neck and the fretboard where I refinished the back of the neck in a satin finish and where I improved the fretboard by rolling the edges and crowning and polishing the frets. Well, <laughs> Although I'm still glad I did all that because I learned a lot and I was reasonably proud of what I did for not knowing what I was doing. Turns out, after my local luthier, Sean, whom you have been introduced to now, at Fleming Guitars here in Prescott, Arizona, downtown Prescott, Arizona, after I got a good hard look at uh, this guitar, turns out there was a back bow right here in the middle of this neck, causing buzz and an assortment of other issues as you might expect. Okay, it is what it is, but instead of dropping in my new pickups that I was expecting to do this past week, we had to deviate from that make a detour from that and instead have him fix my neck and it turns out that this has a one-way truss rod who knew and so it's not it was not just as simple as making a truss rod adjustment so we had to do what we called plan B which you will see in this video in order to keep these videos at a reasonable length, I'm going to break down his work into two videos, actually. So in this video, after he gets his assessment done and he basically gets a start on things, there was no reason to sit there and do hours of him filming, leveling the fretboard and crowning frets and polishing frets and all the like. So we basically got to the point where he was off and running with his work. And we'll save the second video with him wrapping up the work and with the results of his work fixing the fretboard and the neck. So. So uh, apologize for the little deviation. We're deferring dropping in the pickups, but not forgetting about them. So after these couple of videos all revolving around the neck and the fretboard, we'll get to the final, final modification or upgrade, and that is replacing these ceramic pickups with my Fender I'll Nickel 2 noiseless pickups. So enjoy the video where the next scene will be actually in the guitar shop, Chris Fleming's guitar shop, and where we get going on, or I should say, where Sean gets going on the work related to the back bow of this neck. Welcome back to Chris Fleming Guitars. So we're taking a little detour here. This video was supposed to be all about dropping in some new pickups I have and that would kind of wrap up the modifications for this guitar. However, along the way, Sean has informed me after a careful look at the guitar that the neck actually has a bow in it. Lots of necks have bow in them, mm -hmm. but a little bit of bow is natural in a guitar neck and we, we use the truss rod to control the amount of bow. What we have in this situation is a neck that has a little bit of a back bow to it. Rather than pulling forward from the string tension, the wood has a little bit of a back bow. We've got a one-way, a single action truss rod. What that means is that the truss rod is designed to counteract the string tension. Imagine that we start with a straight piece of wood, we put the strings on and the neck pulls this way, right? Yeah. So the single action truss rod that we have in here is designed to straighten out the neck again against that string tension. It only goes one way. It's it's just it's just a design choice. Okay. And it's better in some ways and worse in others. In this case, this is a single action rod. You know, the neck is straight and over time the wood has taken on moisture or lost it or done whatever in a way that it, it kind of back bowed this way. Now we've got this single action rod that'll just keep pushing it that way. We need it to come forward into a little bit of relief, as we call it. But we can't do that with the truss. We can't do that with so you have plan B. We have plan B. Right now, when the truss rod is entirely loose and there is string tension on the neck, it is almost acceptable. There's certainly some buzzy spots. There's a, there's a bit of a rise in the center of the neck, especially on the base side. What I want to do is try to level the frets in such a way that when we string it up under tension, it pulls into a little bit of relief. You know, if we were trying to make this guitar the greatest guitar it can be, this is not the, the path. Uh, you recommend just replacing the whole neck. As, as Leo Fender intended. Yeah, that's uh, the Fender intended. <laughs> you know, uh, I hear you. Yeah, he, but for a two hundred dollar guitar, we're probably not going to do that. Exactly, it doesn't always make sense. What we'll do is we'll take string tension off. The the neck will naturally back bow a tiny bit from that. We'll level the frets as it exists, and then we'll put the string tension back on to pull it into a little bit of relief that we can then control by tightening the truss rod. Okay. 
and that's that's the goal in the end is that we have a controllable situation beautiful you know okay well i think we're going to go to sean's bench and we'll set up there so here we have our telecaster again currently under string tension has a nearly straight neck with just a little bit of a rise so here we have a couple of straight edges of different lengths a slotted straight edge, a notched straight edge. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna use my fret level fret rocker mm -hmm. once in a while as well to check things. Here's the goal. We we don't want to just start with a sanding beam, start leveling frets without confirming that all of the frets are seated, they're staying still. Because what can happen is we can have frets that are actually coming loose on the end. They're trying to sort of pop themselves out on either end. They start to bounce, they get high on one end or the other. You run into that as some kind of buzzing or plinking or choking sound. You check it with a rocker, it's rocking. You say, oh, the fret's high, you mm -hmm. need to level. You take your sanding beam or your rocker or whatever, and you start leveling. All you're actually doing is pushing that fret down into place, mm -hmm. leveling it, and then it bounces back up when you, and you haven't fixed anything. Usually this is a by eye thing initially, the end. And I'll be able to tell if there's any fret that is sticking out higher than another, and I can go to that fret and try to seed it, see if it, oh. if it will sit down. As opposed to leveling it, that might just do the trick. Exactly, oh, because okay. rather okay. than take height away from the fret, we'd mm -hmm. rather just sit it down where it, uh, where it should be, you gotcha. know? And so it's supported by the wood firmly, and it, okay. you know, when you press the string, it stays in place. Now I am going to do a little bit of sighting. So it's hard to explain, but I'm just gonna basically sight down the ends of the frets like a full cue. Now I'm just doing it with the express purpose of, do I see anything poking out that I think needs to be seated? As in the fret is actually coming out of the fretboard and should be pushed back into place. Yeah. And I do see some high stuff down here. I've got my finger on this the 16th fret. Do you see that gap? Yeah, yeah. I do. And you see that it's larger than the, the gaps around Completely. it? Yeah. And, and as you get over to here, there's no gap under the under that next fret. Yeah. You know, I was seeing a little bit of a rise in this section of the neck, mm -hmm. and I can see that those gaps are probably the reason. Maybe two or three frets, in fact, that are not quite firmly seated all the way. With the light here, you can actually look towards the center of the fret and see that gap continues along the center of the fret. So rather than just go and try to hold down the ends, I'll show you how I might do that. Okay, yeah, so this is a little fret holder. This is just to essentially get on a fret. I've got these little grooves cut in this brass rod. It'll sit down on the fret and I can get on that with my hand, oh, squeeze push and put a lot of pressure on it. Nice. And push it into place. And a lot of times that alone, just the pushing action is all we have. To do. And then I'll put glue in there. It'll mm -hmm. wick inside. Okay. We're going to go a step further. I'm going to take the strings off and the neck off. We're going to go get fret jaws is what they're called. Okay. They're, they're what we use to install frets sometimes. Okay. And I'm going to use the jaws to actually squeeze the entire fret down rather than just holding an end because I can see that these are unseated in the center of the fret. Okay. This will just hold okay. down ends that are popping out, but I'm seeing gap underneath the center of the fret and I'd like to try to press the entire fret down into place. I can see that there is a group of like three frets that just don't look like the others mm -hmm. as I'm siding down the neck. After we've done a little pushing to see if those will seat themselves, we'll start checking with the straight edges and the rocker try okay. to determine if there's any other high points that we can press into place because what we're trying to do is reduce the amount of material we're, we're removing you want to maintain their lifetime so if we can just get things to seat we're using brass fretwork a lot because it's softer than the uh the nickel of the fret. Mm, so it won't dent it. It won't dent it, yeah. Got it. Now, can you still detect the bow in the neck in the middle in general? Oh, yeah. You can, okay. Yeah. All right. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this opportunity since... Mike is giving me a platform. There's a there's a YouTuber named Rhett Scholler, a uh, good player. Rhett goes to a shop there that has a tech. His name is Ben Calhoun. He features on a lot of his videos. And he's clearly a really experienced, knowledgeable tech. There was a video where Rhett and Ben were looking at a guitar. And Ben kind of did this thing where he sort of sighted in the neck and he was explaining. He said, if you ever see anyone do this, he was. But he basically said, don't do this. This doesn't tell you anything. Ben's point there was to say, you can use the string as a true straight edge. Yeah. 
it will read what the frets are doing. Sighting down the neck, you can get tricked by frets being unseated. I'm not, I'm not trying to not trying to call out Ben, but I am a little bit. He was, he was kind of making the point like, don't do this because it doesn't tell you anything. Mm -hmm. You should use the string to read neck relief. I agree that you should use the string to read neck relief, but sighting down either edge of a fingerboard also gives you a lot of great information. It's the reason I do it so frequently, especially in the case where we're, we're looking for loose fret. And I know that if, if an end is popped up, I'll see it yeah. along the edge of the... That's not something that you can see by holding a string down and tapping. Yeah. That's not going to show me anything about the fret ends right. being loose. Right. And in fact, my tap will be a little bit thrown off because say I hold down at the first fret, I hold down at the 14th fret, and then I tap at the seventh. Well, the heights of each of these fret ends individually affects my reading. So let's say this one's a little loose and that one's a little low. Well, mm -hmm. now my reading is thrown off. So, so it's actually best to use all of these methods. And when you do the string method, measure in multiple places. Use this first fret, use the second fret, use the 14th, use the 12th, use, oh, you know, okay. tap in a few spots okay. and that give you a general sense sure. of what the next There's is. There's a lot of nuances to this. Yeah, there is, yeah. yeah. And it's also why we have this thing, you know, so you've got a notched straight edge that is meant to sit in between the gaps of the frets and I can set this on the neck and read the fingerboard, see if there's any higher, particularly low spots in the wood. Not the, not the frets, but the wood. You're now. taking the frets out of the equation there with those notches. Yeah, exactly. Did you just detect yeah. anything by using that now? Nothing I didn't see already. Okay, yeah, these are fret jaws. You know, you can adjust the tension, do their job very well. It sounds like what I'm hearing is once you're done doing this, you're gonna be able to determine whether leveling is in order or not. Ideally, I start seeding things and we find that a lot of the back bow was, oh, actually unseated frets. However, this not straight edge did just show me there is a little back okay. bow to the neck. I get the feeling the luthier world is a lot of jury rigging things up. It sure is. I've got these jaws that'll snap shut at a certain tension. I can adjust that tension with this little wheel there. I'm trying to find a tension where I feel like I'm just pushing the fret down into the, the wood mm -hmm. and it's firmly seating itself. This is rosewood. These jaws are strong enough to dent the wood if I mm -hmm. if I tighten things to them. I've got that clamped down and seated. I'm gonna take a little bit of very thin super glue, put it on a corner of a razor blade and sneak it in to the corner where the fret meets the wood and try to get it to wick in there. Try to get the fret to stay down. Yeah, and this is very thin stuff and it'll wick down down into the slot and that's pretty much it got about four big drops in there it's a you know capillary action yeah would be the that's scientific the good terminology yeah. but you use that that property of of super glue quite a lot when you're fixing guitars there's a few in that area that are a little bit high what that tells me is most likely that the fret was never fully seated in its slot. The slot is either a little shallow or there was debris in the slot that prevented the fret from going all the way down. So even with the amount of pressure I just used, which would any more would have been maybe enough to dent the rose, the fret didn't go down all the way to the wood. However, what we did was we got it down as low as it's going to go and then we glued it in place. So now when I level the frets, I'm taking the minimal amount of material gotcha. off the top yeah, of that. This is good as it's going to be now. Exactly. Okay. It's as good as it's going to be now. Okay. We're still improving things by doing okay. this. And by the way, that's Laurel yeah. Wood. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah. yeah which yeah. I'm very pleased about. But... Yeah, it, it looks great too. That's yeah. a really nice piece. It is. So. I thought so. Next fret, I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing. This one has less of a visible gap, but I'm going to try to seed it. Let's see if we can close that up just a little bit. That sat down a tiny bit, but mm -hmm. it's still like the other one, not okay. all the way down. That actually helps. Yeah, I can see that 16, I think it is, is still. Yeah, neither of those wanted to sit all the way down. But they're better than they were. They're better than they were. You know, the gap's going to be there mm -hmm. visually. As far as I can see, those were the offenders. Okay. As far as, you know, ends of the frets sticking up high. And I could see that they, across the center, were also just a little bit gappy. Now, I'm looking more into the area of the neck that has the actual back bow of yeah. it. Mm -hmm. and, I'm, and I'm seeing that there's a fret or maybe two that could be a little bit unseated as well. So I'm gonna okay. try to grab the fifth fret here and we'll see if that sits down at all. Does it seem like just the edge or the middle as well? It seems like kind of the, the treble or the base half of the fret, okay. you know, mm -hmm. not just the edge, mm -hmm. not the whole thing. The treble side is pretty good. Okay. That's actually sitting down. Oh, nice. Okay. If the fret's are already bouncing, we gotta, we gotta do everything we can to try to get it to stay down in place. That one got a little messier because we needed a little more glue. So I'll clean some of that up. I, 
I would say that helped. I mean, they're, they're certainly back bow to the neck, but that fret was a little unseated. The others look good, actually. All right, so here's what we'll do now. I'm going to do a really quick glue down the sides of a couple of these frets, reinforce everything, and then we're gonna start leveling it. Okay. Because a lot of these, they don't look high, do look a tiny bit gappy, and I don't want them to be moving under the pressure of my okay. sanding beam. We want to try to freeze everything in place before we start sanding. Now what we've got is a neck that's a tiny bit back bowed, a truss rod that is loose. And I think we'll get a good result with just no tension on the truss rod, leveling as is. And in a way, when this is done, then it's going to be basically a perfectly straight neck. It won't have any relief at all in it, right? When Yes, when, when the way we, we're until we put string tension on it, yeah, which will pull it into a bit good of relief, yeah, good you know, yeah. which is what we want. You, yeah. you don't want the neck to be actually dead straight under string no, tension. No. You know, you want right. a tiny bit of that relief. So. I know on, okay. the, on the interweb, um, I see various camps arguing about perfectly straight necks, playability-wise, versus those that say you should have some relief. There seems to be a little of argument, although I seem to feel that the ones that claim a little relief is important are winning out that argument. So. Well, they're they're just dead correct. I could show you a, a diagram. So, but if you That's want the neck to have perfectly consistent headroom, you want every note to buzz the same amount, mm -hmm. then a little bit of neck relief is necessary. Yeah. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get my surrogate Telecaster body. I'm gonna bolt this onto there. I use that so that we won't hit yours with a, a gotcha. sanding beam. Appreciate that. Now we've got it on the surrogate body. Yeah, so we've got a neck with a little bit of backbone and we're gonna try to take it out. I can see that the high area is definitely still right where it was. It's okay. like here to here. Five, seven. Yeah, the neck kind of goes like this and then it jumps up a little bit and then it comes back down and continues. The strategy is to try to take my leveling beam and try to use pressure to remove more material from this area and yeah. level these away rather than try to, I don't want to take more material off the rest of the neck, but right. I have to. This sounds like it's very, art what's the word? It's more artistic than engineering kind of thing. You know, yeah, it's a combination. I You, you try to make it as much engineering as you possibly can. Yeah. You know, I want to take away variables from situations. There's a reason I'm holding the neck in, in playing position right now. You'll see me supporting the neck with the back of my hand when mm -hmm. I use the beam, trying to create the most, the situation that is most like it's gonna actually be when it's under string tension and playing. Mm -hmm. Here's my beam. It's important that the beam spans the entire length of all the frets. And it's basically you know? sandpaper? Or is that? Yeah, this, okay. is, this is adhesive back sandpaper. It was 320 grit. Mm -hmm. This is worn down to something more like 500 at this point. Okay. What I'm essentially doing is supporting the neck, sandwiching the beam onto there. I start going back and forth and going across the radius and trying to keep the, the motion consistent, trying to keep the beam along the plane of the neck. You know, I don't want to get it tilted this way or this way. And I'm trying to apply pressure about where my first finger is here while I'm moving it because wow. I'd, I'd like to take away material there. And I can feel right now when I'm setting the beam down that it wants to rock around this point right Yeah, here. I can see you rocking it there. You know, yeah, yeah. That's where the high point is. Interesting. And I'll just basically sandwich it and squeeze it and I'm, I'm actually using quite a bit of pressure here and what we'll see as we go along the top of the frets you'll see material being removed on certain frets and not on others and what we want is to eventually see material being removed from all the frets you'll probably be able to see if you look in the light at the tops of the frets there's a big old flat spot across the top of this mm -hmm. one you know you can see the flat spots here whereas this fret is still nice and shiny oh. all the way around oh, yeah you know but as we move up we've leveled Clearly. This one's low. You can see that yeah. the, the fifth one is low relative. Yeah, there's to very low material there. I think I, I probably, when I squeezed it down, it probably ended up lower than the ones around it. So I might have squeezed it too hard, but we'll level down to whatever we need to. Yeah. yeah, and as I get up the neck, I can see that there's, you know, we're hitting everything on the treble side, but there's low areas on the bass side. So we'll do this until the, the whole tops of every fret is shiny. And then begins the long process of restoring the frets to their shape and not lowering their heights while we're doing so. <laughs> okay. That's crowning. So we're, we're approaching the point here where this becomes... Redundant. So, redundant, exactly. Um, I'm about to do this for a long, long time. Yeah, I'll probably say in this for 45 minutes. You know, I can do that Monday. And, yeah, yeah. You know, we'll pick back up. And I'll see you after this edit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. So he's going to level the frets over the week then crown them later, crown and polish them. I hope you enjoyed watching Sean assess the next situation and coming up with a plan to remediate the bowed neck. I'm very 
very happy with his work. By the time you're seeing this, we've already wrapped up all the work. I'm just going to break this off into two videos, so expect a follow-on video. Anyway, very happy with what Sean did. I'll give you a preview. I can vouch for just the beautiful craftsmanship he did on the guitar neck. I'm very happy with it, and I think the guitar is saved, and I think it's going to be a great guitar once we get those pickups in. A couple of reminders in upcoming videos as I wrap up this series, and that is that my guitar teacher, Adam, will be playing this guitar for you. I'll probably do a tone test here before we replace the pickups because I think that's important, that, but that doesn't mean I'm playing well. That just means I'm doing a tone test, but for your enjoyment and entertainment, um, I'm going to have Adam perform uh, a number or two using this guitar so you can really enjoy it and enjoy him as well. That's a wrap here for today. Uh, the next video will be about finishing off the neck work, and then we'll get into the pickups. And as always, keep it real.